nobody can say what anybody else should do in their own life, not just in hair loss, in any regard. Nobody's lived your life. Nobody's walked in your shoes. Nobody. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. So I want to talk about hair loss trauma, the trauma that can actually occur from dealing with hair loss, living with hair loss, and can present itself years later after even having lived with hair loss successfully. And you may not even be aware that there are certain parts of you that were so impacted, they erupt later on, um, almost hitting you like a ton of bricks, like trauma can and could and does for many people. So um, I probably want to explain a little bit about my own experience of how this occurred in my life and when I first realized like how a traumatic things from your past can come up resurface and then almost engulf you to the point of incapacitation. So first, I think what I'm going to do is actually put on my hair and then I will carry on with this conversation. So let's get this on. I don't have a comb here. So let's see here. Yep, that way. Let's get this forward. Uh, let's see. I do think this is going to need a bit of a comb. So let me go comb this out. So I just used a little bit of a spritz of a water and um, make sure that your tabs are in position and then combed it a little bit on the ends. Probably not exactly totally combed out, but this will do for now. Okay. Trauma. So around 2013, after I started wearing wigs in 2012, I had so much social anxiety that um, it was difficult for me to even do the simplest things like go to the grocery store. I used to go at, you know, 6 a.m. when nobody was there, run around almost like it was like a mad dash to get in and out before I would see anybody. And I think it's like a chicken and egg thing with a social anxiety for me in the regard of, I think I always had social anxiety and I think that my hair loss actually made it worse because it made me more of a recluse. It made me more withdrawn. And the less you, if you have social anxiety, the less you put yourself out in a constant mode of being forced to interact with people, the worse it can actually get. And it can get to pretty, pretty extreme degrees. So I got, went to get therapy for social anxiety. And that was the actual, the only, the sole purpose of this. I'm just making sure this looks okay. That was the sole purpose of me actually going to get therapy was to treat my anxiety. And so you know, they do exposure therapy, you know, there's, you know, learning assertiveness, there's different aspects of this, right? But here I am for one specific thing, anxiety. And I had lived my life and I obviously, this was around 2013 and I, my hair loss began in 1999. And I always felt like pretty good. Like I had like this, I don't know, superpower of almost like, except when it came to my hair loss, but anything that ever bothered me in my childhood or whatever, like I was like, almost like I was able to put it like in a box and then like put it up in storage in the attic storage of my brain and like it was done like it just wasn't a thing like I was actually present when 9-11 happened and you know people would ask me about the story like I was running from the building when it was falling and people would ask me about the story and I would actually tell it to them almost as though it was happening to somebody else like I would retell it like I'm telling you about an episode of Law and Order and they're just like like aren't you really affected like aren't you really like that? I would just be like no I mean it, you know it happened and that's this is a story so I'm almost telling it from like <laughs> A different person's perspective other than my own and I think that people always found that weird but I think that's kind of how I was like built and was like that's how I could I could adapt to just dealing with stuff so I ended up uh, going to a therapist and they it was like a young guy actually and I don't I think that if I'd gone to somebody more experienced this probably wouldn't have happened but from seemingly almost one day to the next it was like all of this stuff that like I basically I feel like I forgot or just didn't wasn't in the active part of my brain like came flooding to the surface it was some, some weird dam broke within me and I all of a sudden started having visceral feelings visceral feelings as in crying in my closet in a towel 
for no reason after like, you know, just waking up and going trying to get ready for the day. And I'd be sitting on the hamper crying to a towel. But it's like, you don't even know, you don't, you're not even understanding where these feelings are coming from. You're just, you're kind of just confused about why this is happening. Because where did, where is this? What is this? Like, it wasn't there before. Why is it there now? The thing is, is that it was always there. That feeling just was somewhere else in the brain not being activated and so things can happen and in this case therapy for anxiety which was just supposed to help me in my life activated something in me which i actually really really wish it had not because i felt like it then made my life it brought more issues into my life that I didn't think that were present. Like they were there, but they weren't, if that makes sense. And that is what can happen in having trauma in your system. It, it's like that stuff just lives in your bones. And like, you may think it's completely healed over and you may, you know, maybe in the back of your brain and then it could be like, it could be one thing and it's just like that. And all of a sudden you're crying into a towel and a hamper or you're having this a reaction or an overreaction or you don't know why something is occurring, but there is a reason why it's occurring. It's occurring because of something that probably happened in your life, whether you remember it or you don't. So that is a little bit of history of trauma, a little overview there. And so as this relates to hair loss, I started losing my hair in 1999. I was 21 years old. It took me out at the knees. My hair was always very thick. It was like the single most defining feature on me. It was something, the only thing, one of only a couple of things I got complimented on, like my eye color and my hair. And and I never understood why, because I always thought, well, everybody has hair, so what's the big deal? I didn't realize that it was special um, because I just I just thought, oh, everybody has hair. I don't know what the big deal is. Of course, I know the big deal now. You know, it grew thick. It grew long. This wig is, you know, I was years into my hair loss before I even, I, this is a very light density. This, I was years into my hair loss before this existed on my head because I started with so much. It didn't lessen my pain at all. It's just that reality. What I want to say is that in my hair loss, I had dealt with so much. I'd lost so much of my life I, over a decade before I started wearing wigs. And I dealt in so much pain and suffering and loss of identity. And I mean, I was tortured. I was tortured within. And that's why in 2007, I, you know, was feeling like I was at the bottom of not wanting to just go on anymore, not wanting to tread through this life. And honestly, people will see the hair I had in 2007, they'd be like, I don't even know what you're talking about. You still had hair on your head and all of that. And maybe it was more than some people even had. It didn't matter. I had lost so much of myself. I was on this runaway train that I had no way to stop it. I had no way to put pause on this. I was just watching myself erode in the mirror day after day after day, losing myself more and more and more, you know, hiding from lights and, you know, fear of bathroom lighting where I'm sitting at a restaurant, never feeling like I could ever see myself again in the mirror because you know your hair is framing you a certain way in my case it framed it very much like thick all around my face and it was very what like like that and long and as it just deflated around me and my face looked like it got larger the hair got thinner and my sense of self and who i was just started to disappear and i just want to fast forward a little bit too after i started wearing wigs that's what was really the turning point for me it was because even though Nobody really wants to wear a wig or wear hair or whatever. That was like, it meant being able to see myself again for the first time in like at that point, 13 years, because I started wearing wigs in 2012. It made such a difference to me. It made such a difference in my life to, to see my face again, to see like it framed with hair again in a way that I had not previously that, you know, a lot of times people have put these assembling blocks on them th themselves where they're like, I, how will I swim or go to the beach or do this or that or the other thing? I never thought about any of those things like if I was going to be able to get any portion of this this in my life to be able to feel a little bit like myself for any portion of time I forget the beach or whatever having to worry about every aspect this whole thing was worth it to me I was going to make this work no matter what I was going to make this work however which way I needed to and how I made that happen and all of that that's beyond the scope of this because I'm wanting to really get to this trauma part. So I started to really begin to heal in 2012. I started to be able to want to be, you know, want to have friends, want to go out. You know, at this point, I'm already in my 30s. You know, this began and I was, you know, I guess 34. This began when I was 21. And now I was a recluse. And now I didn't really, I had so much anxiety, I couldn't even go to the store. So I had to get therapy to do this. I 
begin to heal. I begin to learn to live with hair loss. I begin to accept this because I knew I had some control over what I could do and how I could portray myself to myself and to the world. And that helped me to move forward in this. I would cut my hair very short to a shaved back cut and a longer front that I gave up making the ponytail, you know, being able to ever feel make, you know, a ponytail again, because I didn't want to see the hair fall out. And, you know, I was willing to make that trade off because seeing the hair fall was one of the most debilitating aspects. So anything that I could do to help myself move forward in this, I was willing to do. That included cutting my hair very short, that included wearing wigs, and I also did PRP for a very long time. I was flying from Los Angeles to Florida for every four to five months since 2009 to have that treatment. And PRP is not a cure. I mean, that goes without saying. I mean, obviously, I started PRP in 2009. I started wearing wigs in 2012. PRP was never going to give me what wigs could give me, but wigs were not going to help my hair stay on my head longer. So it all kind of works synergistically for me. The cutting my hair short, the wearing the wigs, the PRP, it helped me just find my life within this and begin to live my life. And then also, like I said, I got therapy for social anxiety, even though this reemergence of trauma somehow happens and screws up my life for a bit. I go on my merry way and I live. I begin to just live my life with hair loss as a person with hair loss, telling every every single person on the planet, not being afraid of people knowing that I have hair loss or wear wigs. That is how I live for the bulk of my wig wearing hair loss life. Then in 2022, I get a second type of hair loss that could not be anticipated. The first being female pattern baldness, which is progressive in nature, you know, and the second being a, a non-scarring inflammatory alopecia that was just taking out my hair like I had never seen before. Mind you, I had already had very short hair. It had been short for a very, very long time. Um, I'm familiar with still shedding. My, my hair loss, PRP didn't stop my hair loss. Wearing close front wigs and blending my hairline, but I get get a second hair loss. And this affects me in ways that I don't think I could have anticipated. I would, obviously I was suffering from getting a second hair loss, suffering from seeing myself eroding a new way because it was taking out the temples, like dramatically chunking out the temples. And um, it was making my hair, my, my bio hair look very creature-ish that I could no longer look in the mirror. And I wore a beanie, like basically either was wearing a beanie or a wig at all points of time, except for when I was sleeping. And that wasn't the case in previous years. I went out in my bio hair. I went out in my wigs. People saw me both ways. I just accepted the progressive nature of my thinning hair. But this was different. This was like chunking out my hair in these weird ways. And it was a new type of hair loss. And now it was falling like I hadn't seen in, I don't know, ever with this second type of hair loss. And so that was a hard Hard hit to take. But what was the, again, the trauma, the resurfacing of the trauma was this. I knew that's obviously painful. Losing your hair is obviously painful. But what was really painful was that I would be in the shower thinking like I was starting my day okay. And you know, my the hair would be falling out into such degrees that it was just sliding all over me like worms. And my hair was really short already. And I would be, you know, having emotions that could not solely be wrapped around getting a second hair loss after living with hair loss for this long and knowing that all of that and you know I was I would have this break mental breakdowns of almost primal screams in the shower of terror of I can't explain it but I mean just tears upon tears like it started to like affect me to this degree that I could not have anticipated that a second type of hair loss would ever have possibly been able to do that to me. But that's because I don't think it was just the second hair loss doing it to me. I think it was the first one that was being reactivated from all of the emotions that I lived, being a 21-year-old, 22-year-old, feeling alone, feeling isolated, feeling like I didn't want to be here anymore, feeling helpless, feeling scared. That was being reactivated by this second experience. That is trauma that is living in my bones. I, was, I literally shocked myself because I had no idea that this existed. I had no idea after having lived successfully for so long with this, how could this possibly be a thing? I could not have anticipated that in a million years because I would say I, I was very successful in living with my hair loss. So how could it just all, how could this just all erupt like this, even if I got a second hair loss, not minimizing the, the devastation of that because it was so devastating, but the guttural primal feelings that I was having that was just overwhelming to my system. It enveloped my system to almost non-functional levels. That was trauma from my hair loss from before. How do we get it to take a step further? And then I will this is very long, but you know, 
one of the things in this process of getting a second hair loss is having to change the type of wigs I wear, which are now lace front wigs. And before I had a hairline I could blend my close front wigs with, which is a wig with no lace. So your frame of your face is your frame of your face and all of that. And one of the things in wig life that I've had to let go of is like, I had so much hair growing up, it was so thick that I could never really get a wig that would duplicate my bio hair. It's just very difficult to do when you have that type of thickness of hair. It's also difficult for people if they have a very specific like type of, like something unique about it. Like if it's a very curly kind of hair that's very hard to replicate or if they had a very special color, they oftentimes contact me and they re they're relating in that regard because I had such thick hair and that's just very hard to duplicate in a wig. And it just thicker wigs don't look as natural as lighter wigs, um, so it's harder to pull off. And then I couldn't find the right hairline. So I've been on a quest to get customized hairlines. So I ended up getting a wig that um, actually did match the density of my bio hair. It had very thick density all around. It did need cap resizing. So it still had work to be done. And it had recently gone to New York to um, have work done on this piece. And when the when the resizing of it was done, you know, I noticed that there was that it was had felt like it had a reduced density, it, I could feel that it no longer felt the same anymore on me. And so I was upset when I got, I was doubting myself, I was upset when I got back. And I did talk about this obviously on, on Instagram, my stories, because this is today's um, Monday and this was on Saturday. And I, you know, was having like, I, I was having what I felt was an overreaction because the company can put back more hair to whatever level I want to feel comfortable. We have the capability to do that. And I knew that in my head, I knew that. But I, I felt like this was gone, like this one part of this wig that made this wig special for me that I wore all the time that had this very, very thick, you know, like it's a base bottom, like really heavy. Like this is, like I said, this is thin for me, but like, um, and I will put more into this, but um, it had a very thick feeling, very thick, full bottom, very suede, you know, so a lot of suede to it. And when I felt like it was gone because it got like re moved around in this resizing process and that was gone on Saturday, I had this meltdown like and I was aware like I'm having I'm having an over like you're you're literally telling yourself I'm having like an overreaction, but I can't really stop my feelings. I can't really stop what's going on right now. It's again, it's the runaway train. And I, somebody had wrote on Instagram, I think you're having like post traumatic stress from like, like, like I explained when I got a second hair loss and was having these primal reactions that came from out of nowhere and like getting a wig that felt like for the first time in really all of my wig life, which was over a decade, that could feel like my hair, like that type of density and feel and that was so comforting, like Linus's blanket. It, and then it was gone. It hit me like a loss, like a loss again. And we're talking about a wig right now. And I was just devastated. I was crying my ball in my eyes out on Saturday, even though I knew I could put hair back into the wig. It didn't change my feelings on it. And the reason why I wanted to share all of this is because every single thing I have shared relates to trauma. One, trauma in general, but in trauma of hair loss. People thinking that hair loss is not the devastating disorder that it is. Does it, it doesn't impact and can impact every facet of your life. And it does for many people that you may be fine for years and years later down the line, it just burst, it erupts in some weird way over who knows what will trigger it. In my case, this most recently was it was a wig that triggered it where I had this meltdown again. And, you know, I shared it very vocally and true to myself, very honestly, about what I was going through. Um, it's not and it was not and it is not a diss on the company about whatever I'm explaining and sharing my feelings of what was what I was going through. And I think that it's important to talk about that, those parts of it, you know, because it's not often discussed the trauma, the depth of trauma. Maybe I'm in the minority, but I don't think that I am. If we only see one thing online, if you only see people are just putting their wigs on and just skipping around and living, you know, their their absolute best life. And maybe those people are, but you're not in feeling that exact same thing. You're like, well, what's wrong with me? And I think it's important for people to know I've had hair loss for 25 years, not one type, but two. I've worn wigs since 2012. I have lived what I consider very successfully with hair loss being open and honest and public with anybody that wants to discuss it who walks down the street. But that doesn't mean that hair loss didn't affect me. That doesn't mean I'm immune to the feelings that occur that live inside of me. You know, they're still there. I think that is a powerful realization and for powerful for people 
in general to know, doctors, anybody, to know how devastating hair loss is and can be to any man or woman. And, you know, I'm, I have to, you know, I know I have an appointment to get to and I, I wanted to flip on this camera and I wanted to record this to discuss that all of your feelings are valid within this all of them. It doesn't matter if anybody gets it. It doesn't matter if somebody thinks, well, that's strange. You know, she's having a meltdown over a wig, which can be put back to the way it was. Or she, you know, why is she upset about, you know, her hair loss? If, you know, she shaved her head and she has a good shaped head and that should be good. You know, why are you complaining if that wig should be good enough? Why are you this or why are you that? You should, nobody can say what anybody else should do in their own life, not just in hair loss, in any regard. Nobody's lived your life. Nobody's walked in your shoes. Nobody came out of the oven and experienced all of your experiences, which I think contribute to all of how we live our life within this, within hair loss, and in life in general. We will all cope differently. We all do things differently. It may do it the same. We may do it different. It may make sense, sense to some people. It may not make sense to other people, but it does not have to. It only has to make sense to you. And you're entitled to feel what you feel. You're entitled to do what you want to do for yourself without the fear of societal judgments and perceptions on this matter. You deserve to live your best life. And if you are feeling like, you know, you were doing so great and then all of a sudden something happened and it hit you and you're down, that is normal. I'm here to tell you that after 25 years of hair loss, after living successfully with hair loss, after over a decade of wearing wigs, after fighting tooth and nail to live my best life within this, that I still have my downs. I still can be taken out at the knees on some days. It's just that the downs don't last as long as they used to. The turnaround time is faster. They don't happen as often, but can they happen? Do triggers happen? Absolutely. And if they do, give yourself some grace. Hair loss is definitely not easy.